Guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Jay Siemens. Today we are kayak fishing on a beautiful little lake in eastern Manitoba. I uh, haven't been to this lake open water in a long time and we're back. I got something pretty cool. I got some special mapping for this lake I'm gonna talk all about. But first, we're headed to the shop because I'm gonna make some lures that I'm gonna use today to hopefully catch some fish. We got our plastic salt, we got the mold. Now it's time to make the bait I was talking about. This is the three inch Katina Craw. It's got five cavities. This is a sweet looking bait. Big old pinchers on it, like a crawdad. And um, we're gonna make a couple watermelon type red flake, pretty classic bass color. You can't really go wrong with a brownish watermelon type color. Yeah, first things first, shake up your Plastisol, get it in the microwave. We're not gonna go too in depth on lure making. You can find, I've done a couple of videos. There's, there's lots of great videos on how to's. Right now, we're just gonna get it cranking. I'm gonna start with three minutes on the barbecue, the microwave. We got our safety gear, we got our mask, glasses, gloves, all that stuff, because hot plastic hurts. It's starting to get clear, so you want. It's go time! I just scared Brandon. All right, let's add a little color. We got some colorant labeled pumpkin brown. That's pretty much good. Another thing to keep in mind when you add flake, add it at the end because you can burn it. We're gonna add some red flake. That looks good. All right, first batch. Let's see how it looks. The Katina Craw. Whew. Well, that batch turned out perfect. Look at those cute little guys. I gotta take my outfit off. Whew. Look at these cute little baits. I can't say that I've seen too many baits that look like this. Like, look how big the pinchers are on some of these. Some of them didn't fill in perfectly, but it's got it, you know, I think a different balance to it because it's got such big weight there. I'm sure those things look amazing underwater. I'm really happy that this color turned out. All right, look at that. One pour, and that is gorgeous. Like, I love that color. You cannot go wrong with that color. If you see a crayfish swimming around in the lake, it looks like that. Maybe not red flakes, but so cool. All right, we're gonna throw those over there. We're gonna do another batch. So here it is, all rigged up. It's a little windier, so I went with a heavier size uh, Midwest finesse, but this bait looks good. I messed with it at the launch a little bit, and uh, I think it's gonna be good. I think it'll catch a mix of bass and walleyes, um, which this lake has a bunch of both. So I'm excited to get out here. We got some storms on the horizon, so we'll see if we can dodge around them, but uh, it's a good day to be back in the kayak. I have never been to this lake at this time of year, and wow, are there a lot of weeds. We're gonna try to find some rocks a little bit deeper. We got that mapping. There we go. Off. It's all right. It's a good sign. So today I'm going to focus on any rock outcroppings right here. I can see a little rock on the map. You can see it sticks out a little bit there, but any rocks, any sort of main lake humps and stuff. Oh, there's a couple islands around here. So as you can see on the front here, I got two graphs. I brought my Lowrance along specifically for the mapping. And that's a question I get lots. It's like, hey Jay, what brand? Well, honestly, I think you should get the brand that has the best mapping in your area because mapping is, is what saves you so much time. Obviously a lot of graphs have this auto charting technology, but if you already have the maps, well, that saves you a lot of time. And for going to a new lake, it just, you know, with gas price, with how expensive everything is, if I'm going on a big fishing trip, if I'm renting a cabin or whatever, you know, you spend a hundred bucks, a couple hundred bucks on a chip, well, instantly it gives you so much data and the company that does the mapping for a lot of these lakes in Eastern Manitoba, Northwest Ontario is called Angler's Edge Mapping. And a lot of these lakes, you, I would have never expected to be mapped. You go down to Minnesota, everything's mapped. Up here, there's nothing mapped for the longest time. So now they've added so many lakes to the list. I don't even know how many lakes they have now, but they've got the big ones. They've got, you know, Red River, Lake Winnipeg, Lac de Bonny, um, part of Lake of the Woods, part of Shoal Lake. And like, you know, amazing maps. But they also have all these other small lakes uh, in Eastern Manitoba, in the Nopaming, in the White Shell. And um, it's just unlocked a lot more info for anglers. So I'm excited um, just because I don't have too long to fish today. 
and this is gonna help me. We're gonna, we're gonna fish a couple rocky points, maybe we'll try to find a couple offshore humps. Should be a mix of bass and walleye on this lake, but we'll see. I got lots of weeds on my prop. There we go. Ooh. That is a nice big bass to start the day. Jay's Jigs. Jay's Jigs does it. I'm gonna spot lock. Whew. Don't have a net, don't have a measuring board, but we do have a big Manitoba bass. There you go, on the Katina Craw. And uh, five minutes in, got a nice bass. He thought it was a crayfish. To be honest, I'm not even 100% sure if there's crayfish in this lake, probably, but uh, anything hopping along the bottom definitely triggers smallmouth. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this color I made. I ripped one claw off. My plastic is pretty soft on that batch, so. But I bet you I can still catch fish with one craw. Right now I'm just on a little rocky point, wind's blowing in, and uh, just hopping that along the bottom. That fish came out of eh, probably four or five feet of water. They're probably sliding off. There could still be fish in the weeds, but I think uh, they'll kind of be on these more main lake reefs and points, but that is a good sign, because we just started. Well, we got a decent sized bag of baits, and that's, you know, that's the beauty of making your own baits, is you rip a claw off, whatever, I'll keep that bait and I'll remelt it later, and I can definitely make into a new bait. But I mean, the price of a mold, you know, whatever. 40 to 60 bucks. If you're melting down old plastics, it pays for itself pretty quick. A pack of plastics is, you know, five to 10 bucks. This is fun. This is, I actually think like my first eh, serious bass mission this year. And I have a feeling this bait's gonna crush some walleyes too. Just hopping it, just picturing. Have you ever seen a crayfish swim? That's what I'm trying to emulate. Just that dart, dart, and then pause. Dart, dart, pause. Decent. Eh, he's coming in a little too quick. Oh, there we go. As expected, the craw catches walleyes as well. If I was eating fish tonight, that fish would come home with me. The thing, you know, regardless if, if a walleye is eating crayfish or not, a bait that hops on the bottom like that just strays in the stays in the strike zone. You know how, how it you know, pops up on the back end? Think about a jig in a minnow, depending on what type of jig you're using or something, it just sits in the mud. Not that they can't eat it out of the mud, but these crayfish baits, you know, they get them sitting up and they're, you know, little pinchers going and stuff. And it's, it's irresistible for a walleye too. And I think in recent, you know, last couple of years, people are fishing with a lot of Ned rigs and they're realizing how good they are as walleye baits. They're just a nice small size. Walleyes have no problem snapping it up and you can fish it, you know, a little slower than if you're fishing a swim bait or a twister tail or something. Oh, on the fall. Hoo, 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 hoo. That was fun. That fish was shallow. That's a pretty long fish. All right. I'm a fan. First time using the bait. I think there might be more fish under us. We just need to find the right spot. They can start to school up pretty good at this time of year. And I think if we can find the right spot, we could crack them. Oh, that's a good one. Oh, ho, ho. no. Oh man, that was a big bass. Oh man. Did you see that water just frothing? Oh, that hurts. That fish was shallow and angry. Oh, that's everything I wanted right there. That one stings. I, uh, I don't feel like I get too bothered by missing fish, but maybe I do. I'm dramatic, let's face it. You know, now, late August, early September can kind of be a bit of a transition period, which I personally find a tougher time to catch bass. You can catch them fishing shoreline. You can also catch them on main lake humps. But yeah, it's just pulling a little bit off the shore sometimes can get you some of the best fishing. All right, I'm gonna zoom out here and show you my kind of process looking at the map. So we'll slide over here. I love having this little around just for whatever. So there's a nice mess of islands and I'll zoom in even more. I'll go back. See right here, like this stuff. This is what I'm looking at. I'll zoom in one more time. Those little nuggets off the island right there, like that point and that point, a little rock sticking off, that could be key. So we'll, I think we'll head over there next and try some of that more main lake stuff. Caught one bass off the shoreline. It was interesting because when Angling Edge started, you know, however many years ago, it was just like, okay, yeah, they got a couple cool lakes. And now they've got a team of people mapping all over the place. And I don't even know how long the database is, but it's, 
they've got some monster lakes map. Like one of the ones that I think is incredibly valuable that I'm most excited to use is Clearwater Lake in Northern Manitoba, the Lake Trout in Mecca. That lake has always been tough because unless you had, you know, waypoints from someone, it's pretty tough to just drill out that whole bowl and, and find a spot and it, it just, you know, it, it wasn't easy. But that's the thing. And that's that's the good side and the bad side of a mapping. The bad side is, you know, now it levels the playing ground for everyone and, you know, it, the fish are getting more pressure. But what I say to that is, well, then we need to, you know, work on our catch and release and our proper fish handling and, you know, not keeping everything you catch. So I'm fine with all the technology, having mapping for all these lakes. I think it's amazing. I've always been jealous how you go down to, you know, Northern Minnesota, everything's mapped. But with this comes responsibility to be good, good uh, conservationists, stewards of the land. So the rig I'm using is a 7.3 extra fast. So meaning like a very sensitive, very fast bend on the tip. It's a medium. It's a great rod for, you know, tube jigs, Ned rig, that sort of stuff. Swim baits, just a versatile rod. A little beefier, like a little more meat on it than the seven and a half I often use for some lighter walleye swim baits and stuff. When you hook these fish in some of this weeds or rocks, trees, you kind of want to put a little more pressure on them to get them out. I've never heard such angry seagulls. I might not make it today. <laughs> Ooh, that feels nice. Come on. Oh, that's a big bass. Off. Lost another good one. Oh, okay. Come on. Nice. Another walleye. This audio is probably pretty comical. Pretty cool, like that was the same cast where I lost that big bass and the walleye was there. So they're, they're sharing the exact same stuff just off of these little rock islands. The seagulls are sharing it too. Ooh, ooh. These birds are just outrageous. So I'm using 10 pound braid with 12 pound floral leader. I like 12. It just, if you really, once again, need to, turn a fish in the rocks or something, then it's good for that. Worst thing is fishing with like eight and then, you know, a big smallie bites right beside a boulder and turns and cuts your line. Definitely seen that happen. That's oh, a fish, come on. I, oh, that's a big bass. That must've been a snag. <laughs> come on, that must've been a snag. Definitely the biggest bass of the day. I saw him throw the plastic out in the sky. That is a nice smallmouth. There we go, we're slowly upgrading and uh, we got away from the pelicans and the seagulls <laughs> and caught a couple bass. Uh, yeah, was I, was I actually snagged? Was that a fish the whole time? I got lots of questions about what just happened. I am pretty proud of how that color turned out the red flake in it. So based on the mapping, this rock kind of sticks out to the left a little bit. So I'm gonna bomb a cast out there. Sometimes the best spots you see are just under the surface. Oh, come on. Like landed it on a bass, I think. Oh, come on. That one followed. Ooh, I like this. Oh, nice walleye. I thought for sure that was gonna be a bass. That is a beautiful walleye. Once again, really wish I had a net. Look at that beautiful perky eye. Little blue tinge on the tail. Cool, I was thinking that was a nice big smallie. So that's what I'm talking about. There's the island and there's that finger sticking off there. That's where that walleye kind of came off of that tip. All right, we're going back fishing some shoreline, but the shoreline I'm focusing on is stuff that's kind of a little more main lake not in any back bays, kind of facing out towards the main deeper section. So I have a confession to make. I didn't make enough baits. This is my last one. Yes, crazy glue would keep them on, but it's when I made these, I made them, and I'm not sure if it was something to do with my mixture, but my plastic was a lot softer than I normally like to make them with. So the craws 
the pinchers have been pulling off. But honestly, you can still catch them without the pinchers. Then it's just a little more like a traditional Ned. Ooh, ooh. This is seeming to be one of our better spots. Oh, I almost went for a swim. Nice. I don't think we've cracked any Manitoba Master Anglers though. That's 18 inches. That's the trophy size in Manitoba. Oh, oh. That's more like it. This is feeling like a big bass. Well, I was just talking about a Manitoba Master. This might be pretty close. This is significantly bigger than any of the bass we've caught this morning. Oh. Well, I wish I had a net right now. Oh, that's a handful. Awesome, that's probably, yeah, around that 18 inch mark. And there's another fish under me right now. So good. Oh, that's gotta be a pike. Oh. Oh my goodness. Probably be a funny still frame in there somewhere. Wow, this bass is just going to the Olympics. Wow, that's a big fish. Look at that bait down the trap. <laughs> that, those couple jumps were just incredible. I don't know, probably another 17, 18 incher, somewhere in there. She goes. Wow, that was sweet. My goal is just to catch a couple of fish on these baits, but they've definitely, uh, they've done it. I was convinced that was a pike the way it hit and I just saw white, I saw a long white fish. I was like, oh. Oh. Got him. Oh. Oh boy. I saw a couple weird marks underneath and I was like, well, I'll drop right underneath. Kind of like what I was saying, and this time of year, it's they can just be a little ways off. Ooh. I'm always impressed at how good those Bassmaster guys are at grabbing them without a net in high stress situations. So I'm not there yet. Whew. That is a chunky Manitoba Smalley. Cool. Having a fun day. Just, I mean, we tried the main lake stuff, got a couple, now we're just fishing these, these little points and uh, we're burning through the plastics. But luckily, I have a mold. So we'll make some more when we get back. Oh. Oh, that felt real nice. Wow, I like hooked him in the belly or something. Oh man, <laughs> their jumps are just ridiculous today. Wow. I don't think many people think of Manitoba as a destination for smallmouth, but there's some pretty good bass fishing. I mean, they're not as big as Great Lake Smallies, but you can fish these lakes and not see another boat all day. And there's something to be said for that if you like to do that, which I like. I like having the lake to myself. And the kayak's nice for being able to get into any little puddle. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Right off that rock. That was awesome. Boy, wow, he is pulling the kayak. Oh, what? Oh, ha, 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 ha. I probably think that was the longest of the day, but that is all right, because that just happens sometimes. One more good one, we'll call it a day.
All right, I think we're gonna end it off with this guy. Well, I lost a lot of fish beside the boat today, but that is mostly my fault and not having a net. This lure definitely passed the test. Good for walleyes, good for bass, good for the odd pike, but uh, it just felt good to be back bass fishing. I haven't done much of it this summer. And um, yeah, depending on where you guys are fishing, I would, I would check out Angler's Edge mapping. Um, definitely helpful today. I had never been on this lake with this map, so it, it just, it cuts the learning curve and you can focus on, you know, points of interest rather than just fishing everything and driving around and looking. So definitely helpful. They've got the, you know, app, as I mentioned, that you can put on your phone as well. I'll link them below. And um, safe to say, I'm gonna have to pour some more Katina Cross when I get back. All right, guys, please wear your life jackets. Let's be safe. Summer is like almost over, which is incredibly sad, but people are talking about hunting season already. I'm not mentally there yet, but, Anyways, guys, that was a fun day on the water. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll catch you very soon.